Well, welcome to a new series of videos. We're going to be working our way through the book of 1 Peter. And today, just looking at the first two verses, they are incredibly rich verses that lay a foundation for the whole letter. I encourage you to pause the video and take some time to read through these verses. Even better than that, it would be great to take some time and read through the whole of chapter 1. And first prize would be to stop the video and take a few minutes to actually read through the whole five chapters of 1 Peter. Just to familiarize yourself with what's going on in this whole letter. It's a great letter to be digging in together and it will equip us to know how to live as God's people. And I've called the series We Are. And this first section is looking at the fact that we are chosen. Before we dig in, just spend some time praying and asking God to help you to understand His Word so that you will be equipped to teach it well to others. The letter starts by telling us who, who the writer is. So this is Peter. This is Simon Peter, the Apostle of Jesus. Um, he was originally called Simon and Jesus gave him the, the nickname Peter, which means the rock. Um, Peter had become the spokes person after the day of Pentecost for the whole Christian movement. He makes it clear that he was an apostle, a sent one of Jesus Christ. And in most circles, it is agreed that this is definitely a letter from the apostle Peter. He knew and loved Jesus. He was one of Jesus' closest friends. And this is Peter's letter to God's elect. The elect or the chosen ones. So we are chosen. This idea of being God's elect, God's chosen ones will get fleshed out as we go further through the letter. Um, but Peter sets the groundwork here by saying this is to God's elect exiles who are scattered. So chosen by God but people who are exiles. Um, some translations uh, say strangers in the world. So, elect by God, chosen by Him, but strangers in the world. And these are Christians who are scattered throughout um, these places which are all in modern day Turkey. The gospel had gone to them. Many of them may have been um, residents of these places. They had been there all their lives. But because now they had become Christians, they were exiles. This was no longer their home. The idea here is of being uh, foreigners, resident foreigners. So something that Peter will pick up is that is the reality for us as Christians. This world is not our home. Our home is heaven. That's where we're headed. That's where our hope is. But we live here and we are to live well here in this world in which we are strangers. And that's what Peter is going to flesh out throughout the whole book. Um, but we see Peter gives a whole lot of really big ideas for us to try and get our heads around in these first two verses. So in verse 2, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. The foreknowledge of God the Father. Just before I dig into that, we see here we've got a Trinitarian statement from Peter. It's chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, um, all in the spotlight in these opening uh, lines of Peter's letter. Chosen, elect, it's the same idea, according to the foreknowledge of God. This is showing that before um, the world was made, God took the initiative to choose to fortunes, or as Paul will often say, uh, predestined. Uh, God chose us not because of anything good in ourselves. He chose us because he chose us. And so although we might be strangers here in this world, we are not strangers to God. We are his chosen ones. And that is an incredible thing for us to rejoice in, try and get our minds around. So chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, 
through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. This idea of it being sanctified, it is uh, being made holy, and the idea of actually being increasingly made holy. Um, the Spirit here, it says through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, the Spirit is the, the instrument by which God makes the fact that we are chosen in His foreknowledge, um, that is then made operative in our lives through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Um, as we come to faith in Christ, that then shows that we are God's chosen ones. Now, Peter is going to flesh out uh, what it means to be these sanctified ones, these holy ones, in much more detail from chapter 1 verse 13 all the way to chapter 2 verse 3. And actually throughout the letter, he, he spells out what it means to be uh, the sanctified ones. Um, so I'm not going to dig in further in two weeks' time as we look at that, uh, Nick, that passage from chapter 1 verse 13 onwards. We'll dig in much deeper to that. But Peter gives us a, a reason statement here. So we have been chosen by God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be, or um, as some translations will say, for for obedience to Jesus Christ. And sprinkled with his blood. This idea, so the obedience and the sprinkled with his blood are ideas that are linked together for a very good reason. Um, they, they make us think, or they should make us think, of Exodus 24, uh, verse 3 to 8, particularly verse 7 and 8, where we see um, God's covenant people. The, the covenant is being established or confirmed with them, and the people say we will be obedient to this covenant, and Moses then goes and sprinkles um, the blood of the sacrifice onto them as a further confirmation of that covenant. And so Peter linking these ideas together here, obedience and sprinkled with blood, he's showing that um, we are now, as God's chosen ones, we are the covenant people of God. And that's a massive thing for us to, to rejoice in. Um, God has made promises throughout time with his people. And now, as God's chosen ones, it's not only um, the, the Jewish nation now, these Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, these are all Gentile areas, but they are included as part of the chosen ones and to be obedient and sprinkled with his blood, to be his covenant people. It's a wonderful thing for us to rejoice in as God's chosen people. But just to be clear, as these chosen ones, it's not chosen um, just to wait around as strangers in the world until we get home to heaven one day, to the new creation. We are chosen for a purpose, to be obedient. We are to live lives of obedience now as God's blessed ones, as strangers here. We're not strangers to God. We are chosen by him, sanctified through him for obedience to him. We should be a people who, who are living lives of obedience. And Peter ends the greeting with this grace and peace be yours in abundance. As God's chosen ones, we are chosen and we now know God's grace, God's love in action to us in Jesus. And we know God's peace. We know the Prince of Peace. It is an incredible privilege to be a part of God's elect, chosen ones. God has done all, the, has taken the initiative in this. It's according to his foreknowledge that he's chosen us. And he's also, as we saw in um, Ephesians 2, Paul says um, that we have been shown God's grace and God has prepared good works for us to do. 
Peter is picking up on a sim similar idea. We don't do the good works to get chosen by God, but because we have been chosen by God, God wants us now to be obedient to him. He has called us to be an obedient people. And the rest of 1 Peter is going to flesh out what that obedience looks like. How do we live as strangers in the world, exiles scattered, in a way that shows that we're being obedient to Jesus? And ultimately, we want the world in which we live to come to know Jesus. We want them to bring glory to God um, by, by being saved by him and living obedient lives to him as well. And that's what Peter is going to flesh out as we continue our way uh, through this letter. So as you take time working through this passage with those who you're going to teach, um, it's worth taking time to double click, as it were, on this and expand the idea of being chosen. How can we increasingly rejoice in the fact that God has chosen us, but then also to expand on what it's going to look like for us to be an obedient people, living in obedience to Jesus. And this really should impact us in the everyday stuff of life. Uh, we, we need to slow down though and actually think through the different areas in which God has placed us in our workplace, in our family, in our neighborhood, in our church. What is it going to look like for us to be obedient people who are rejoicing in the fact that we've been chosen by God the Father, that His Spirit is doing, has done and is doing a work in us and that we are now to be an obedient people living for him. The fact that we are chosen is an incredible thing for us to rejoice in, and it should stir us to live in a way that is glorifying to God. Well, as you dig in further, I pray that this, these truths will thrill your heart. Again, I encourage you to go and read the whole of 1 Peter, and you'll notice many of these themes being expanded and we're going to dig into that in the weeks ahead. God bless.